Hey everyone, this is Brit of Brit in Toyland coming to you with another Avatar The Last Airbender review. Uh, excuse my dog in the background. He uh, really wanted to be up on the couch. Uh, but today I'm reviewing, or uh, sort of opening more so, the uh, Tops On Demand cards that they made for Avatar The Last Airbender over this summer. Uh, on demand, so they were made by order basically. Uh, so there's only... Uh, I forget how many, but like 4,000 maybe that they made total. Uh, I ordered five packs in the hopes that I'd get at least one of each card. I'm not really looking to like get all the colors and borders and anything like that. Just hoping to get one of each of the characters. So we're going to open them up, see what we get. What was kind of cool when they sort of released the art for these cards is that we got some like new art of some of the characters that's like seemingly come from Avatar Studios, which is cool. Fortunately, not for all the characters. Some it's the same stock art from like 2005, 2006. But what are you gonna do? Okay, so we'll open these guys up. All right, so. Box. That's it. A little foam piece. So it comes in quite a nice box. Getting this tape off might be difficult. No, we're good. Here we go. Boop. Get the foam and everything out of the way. All right, let's see who we got. Woo! All right, so we have Toph, Bei Fong. Zero, four out of 50. We got the green border top. Oh, we got May. I'm so happy. <laughs> Great to see her in the mix. You can see the back of the card. Number seven. Uh, a little hard to see, but it says blind since birth. Toph has been sheltered her entire life. It's not easy being the daughter of the Beifong family, one of the richest families in the Earth Kingdom. But Toph's inability to see has heightened her other senses and her earthbending skills. She is highly attuned to the vibrations of the Earth and her family has no idea that she is destined to become one of the greatest earthbenders in the world. But they will soon. So very nice. Again, this is stock image art of Toph we've seen many times. And we got the green border here. So that's cool. Then we have May. This is new art of May, which I love. May's she's a special character to me. I love her a lot. So glad that I got one of her for sure. Fire Nation symbol on the back. Oh. Okay, it's number 18. May, the knife-throwing ally of Azula, is one of the fiercest and dangerous is one of the fiercest and dangerous non-benders in the Fire Nation's arsenal. She, along with Azula and Tai Li, graduated from the Royal Fire Academy for Girls, nice shout out, which is an exceptionally prestigious school for the Fire Nation elite's daughters. She is stern and serious and seems to always be one step ahead of those around her. Nice. There's Momo. Little Momo. This is also stock image. Let's see what it says on the back. Number six. Momo. Momo is a winged lemur, a fictional hybrid of the spotted bat and the black and white lemur. Don't think I knew it was specifically spotted bat. Spotted bat. I knew it was a black and white lemur. But interesting. He is incredibly intelligent and trainable. Mm, I don't know about trainable. <laughs> and his excellent senses of hearing and smell alert Aang to danger from miles away. Eh, debatable. While Momo has many useful qualities, he also causes a lot of trouble. 
If food is available, Momo will eat it, even if it's been carefully rationed. True. And rather than quietly hide from firebender danger the way the kids do, Momo will screech in fear. True. Aang loves to play with Momo, and Kataro loves to pet him. Very sweet. And then we have Iroh, Red Border. So this is also some new art. Iroh with his cup of tea, very sweet. This is number 11. So. Just trying to focus this in here. Uncle Iroh is the brother of the Fire Lord and uncle to Prince Zuko. He's a skilled firebender and was once a great general. Now the functions of now he functions as Zuko's mentor and traveling companion. Calm, wise, and spiritual, Iroh understands the importance of balance and harmony. He spends his days trying to find peace and quiet through meditation, calligraphy, playing pie show, and drinking tea. And then we have Avatar Roku. Uh, I think this is like a Four Elements one with the border showing all the different colors of the Four Elements. Very cool. Avatar Roku, number 13. Avatar Roku is Aang's previous incarnation. And when the going gets tough, he will often act as Aang's spiritual guide. Although born in the Fire Nation, Roku understands the need to thwart the Fire Lord's plot for world domination and thus aids Aang whenever possible on his quest. I believe, I believe this is still stock imagery of Roku, but still very nice. This is not new, but maybe the colors in the background are new, the elements all around it. So Fire, uh, Avatar State, Aang, four elements surrounding it. Aang, number two. When Aang enters the Avatar state, he is able to access enormous power and great wisdom. The glow of Aang's eyes and tattoos in the combination, oh, is the combination, sorry, of all his past lives, focusing their energy through his body. In the Avatar state, Aang is at his most powerful, but also at his most vulnerable. If Aang is killed in the Avatar state, the reincarnation cycle will be broken and the Avatar will cease to exist. Oh, the stockest of stock imagery. We've got, uh, this is like, I think this was also like Disc 5's cover when they sold uh, Book 1 separately in separate discs. So it's Team Avatar, they're all falling off of Appa as he flies around. Team Avatar, number 14. So on the back of the card, we have number 14, Team Avatar. Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Aang's flying bison, Appa, journey to the North Pole to find a master waterbender so Aang can begin to master all the disciplines of the Avatar. Their first stop is the Airbender Temple where Aang learns what really happened to his Airbender ancestors. There he meets Momo, a traditional Airbender pet who joins the group on their journey. And then we have Katara, once again stock imagery, but still very gorgeous. Katara is number three. Katara is a caring and compassionate, passionate rather, 14-year-old girl. Kindness and empathy are her most endearing traits. Katara is determined to save the world despite her limited abilities. Katara is a waterbender who longs to become a master waterbender in order to save her tribe. <clears throat> On to Sokka, again, stock imagery once again. So Sokka is a bullheaded, sarcastic teenager who believes that his way is the only way. He shows the strength and determination of a warrior, but lacks the experience and wisdom to use them effectively. Sokka's goal in life is to reunite with his father so that together they may exact revenge against the Fire Nation for destroying their tribe. Number four. And then Appa. Also stock imagery, so sweet. <clears throat> Number five, Appa is a giant bison who's able to fly. He can often be seen transporting Aang, Katara, and Sokka from one adventure to another. 
If, uh, it was Appa who was frozen along with Aang in an iceberg for 100 years. With one shout of a yip yip, Appa is up, up, and away. So that'll do it for the first pack. The uh, sort of rare special card we got was Green Border Toph. Again, very nice. So we'll move on to the next pack. So I think we're missing Ty Lee, Azula, Jet. I think there's a more regular Aang here somewhere as well. But we've done well so far. No repeats in the first one, which is nice. Okay, get the tape off. Oh. Nice little cases that come with them. Oh, we got Suki! Oh, she's our special one. Let's let that sink in. Yeah, this is also new art and it is gorgeous. I think it's like some of the best of the new stuff we've seen. So this is a blue border one and it is one number, what do we got there? Uh, 15 out of 149, okay. Okay, very glad to get a special Suki. So number 10, Suki. Suki leads the Kyoshi Warriors, an elite order of well-trained and disciplined female fighters from Kyoshi Island. She's incredibly passionate about defending her island from the Fire Nation. So much so, she even mistakenly took Aang and his friends for Fire Nation spies. However, she is equally forgiving and fair. For, for long, she released and befriended them. And cured Sokka of his sexism. <laughs> Zuko. Very nice. Book one art. Zuko, number nine. Zuko's greatest weaknesses are his arrogance and impatience. He believes firebending is the most dominant art and can never be bested by water, earth, or airbending. This is an interesting one. That's also similar to the McFarlane action figure text on the back where it talks about Zuko thinking fire is the best. I mean, I guess so in terms of he thinks the Fire Nation is most dominant. He never really talks about the discipline of fire as being the best, but I mean, I guess you can make that inference from that. It's more so just in like that chibi short where they're all arguing over what the best element is. But anyway, Zuko's teenage overconfidence makes him believe he's invincible. Zuko's eventually Zuko eventually renounces his father, Fire Lord Ozai, and joins Aang in his mission to save the world from his father's tyranny. Number nine. All right, another team avatar. And we get the new Zuko, book three Zuko. The cool firebending effect coming out there. New art. We get another May. Oh, it's May and Zuko, Mako. Zuko, number eight. Zuko, oh, it's different text. Okay, Zuko is an incredibly focused teenager, teenage firebender who bullies and intimidates everyone around him. He is obsessed with capturing the Avatar. Prince Zuko is the oldest son of Fire Lord Ozai, ruler of the Fire Nation, and the great grandson of Fire Lord Sozin, who conceived the war. Number eight. May again. So nice to have May and Zuko together. Here's the uh, regular A. Eh? And this is uh, again stock imagery. Basically like what you'd see at the beginning of the show, the title card. Aang is number one. He's number one. Aang is the hero and spirit of the show. This adventurous 12-year-old is the last airbender and only known survivor of the air nomads. The air on his head, a constant reminder of his lineage. His destiny is to embody the wisdom and skills of the Avatar and defeat the Fire Lord and the Fire Nation. But rather than save the world, Aang searches for adventure. He wants a life full of fun experiences, not heavy responsibilities. Appa again. And we got Jet. Nice. I'll show that quickly. Um, This might be new Jet art. I'm not totally sure. I'm not sure. Either way, it's nice. 
Number 20, Jet. Jet is the charming and charismatic leader of the ragtag, scrappy group of Orphan Earth Kingdom youths known as the Freedom Fighters. As long as he has hook swords in his hands and a piece of wheat grass between his teeth, he's happy. But behind his laid-back demeanor, Jet harbors vengeful thoughts against the Fire Nation who are responsible for his parents' deaths. Those darn rough rhinos. Momo again, and a regular Toph. All right, on to the next. So I think we're just missing Ty Lee and Azula. So we've done well. Still glad to get a cool Suki. That's pretty awesome. She often gets left out of like merchandise and sort of team avatar pictures. So I'm always happy to see. Suki gets special things, get some love. Suki alone. Comic was great for that too. May and another green border that's exciting go along with the toff green border I'm so glad I got a special May she's so great so 20 of 50 got another toff team avatar again hey there's Azula stock imagery Azula number is she she's number 15 Azula is the power-hungry daughter of Fire Lord Ozai and the young, younger sister of Prince Zuko. Twisted and manipulative, she delights in tormenting her brother, and she is a deadly firebender in her own right. Azula intends on getting the Avatar first, and she is determined to keep her brother from regaining his royal title, no matter what. Appa again, Sokka again, Zuko again. Zuko again. Hey, Cabbage Merchant. Forgot about him. Nice, nice, nice. Number 16. Let's look at this real quick. This, of course, is classic stock imagery of the Cabbage Merchant. And he looks lovely. Okay, so, arguably the most resilient man who Aang and his friends run into, the Cabbage Merchant is seemingly everywhere they go. Time after time, Aang's horseplay often leads to the destruction of To the destruction this oh it should be to the destruction of this humble man, merchant's cart but he never gives up always repairing and moving forward you can be sure of one thing wherever there is a need for cabbage in the kingdoms the cabbage merchant will be there to fill it truer words uh yes and then another team avatar card again stock imagery very sweet Number 17, not ready to take on his responsibility as an avatar, Aang makes many stops along the way, bringing Katara and Sokka to exciting new places, but creating diversions from his training. While Katara and Sokka want him to take his role more seriously, Aang just wants to have a good time, which includes penguin sledding, playing airball, surfing on the backs of giant koi fish, and riding hog monkeys. Alright, two packs left. I think it's just Ty Lee I'm missing now. Yeah, and I could be wrong because I forgot about some along the way. But it'd be nice to round off Ozai's angels. Mm. Alrighty. Okay, open up. A hey, excellent already. Ty Lee, 19. This is also new art. It's very cute, winking, pink aura. Okay, so Ty Lee, number 19. Ty Lee is the rambunctious, free-spirited daughter of a well-off Fire Nation family. She attended the Royal Fire Academy for Girls alongside May and Azula, but was unsatisfied with her life's path. <clears throat> As a result, the 
She abandoned her responsibilities and joined the circus, where she honed her agility and acrobatics. Cool, cool. we're flipping around now. Uh, okay, we have the White Border Team Avatar, 7 of 10. Cool. Cabbage Merchant, Avatar State Aang, Jet, Zuko, Toph, May, Azula, Katara. Okay, I think I have them all now, so that's really good. So we'll finish off this last pack and then count them up. I think there's 20 different cards, like different images on the cards total, so count those up. When we finish. All right, we got a green border Momo. A lot of green borders. That's kind of nice. Works out well. Okay, Team Avatar. Oh, King Boomy. We're missing King Boomy. This is great. Number 12. King Boomy is the bizarre old age king of Omashu, one of the largest cities in the Earth Kingdom. Though his methods may be unconventional, his strength and cunning should not be overlooked. His wisdom rubs off as madness, but what's considered crazy to some is just a sign of open-mindedness to King Boomy. Uh, this might also be new. Not sure. Looks good either way. Ty Lee, Momo, Zuko, Iro, uh, Avatar State Aang, Jet, and Toph. Alrighty. So I'll go through these. <clears throat> go, Toph, May, Azula, Katara. Okay, I think I have them all now, so that's really good. So we'll finish off this last pack and then count them up. I think there's 20 different cards, like different images on the cards total, so count those up. When we finish. All right, we got a green border Momo. A lot of green borders. That's kind of nice. Works out well. Okay, Team Avatar. Oh, King Boomy. We're missing King Boomy. This is great. Number 12. King Boomy is the bizarre old age king of Omashu, one of the largest cities in the Earth Kingdom. Though his methods may be unconventional, his strength and cunning should not be overlooked. His wisdom rubs off as madness, but what's considered crazy to some is just a sign of open-mindedness to King Boomy. Uh, this might also be new. Not sure. Looks good either way. Ty Lee, Momo, Zuko, Iro, uh, Avatar State Aang, Jet, and Toph. Alrighty. So I'll go through these. Alright, so we got them all. That is exactly what I wanted. So, psyched for that. Uh, let me know which cards you guys pulled if you got these cards. And I'm really behind really late with this. But yeah, thanks for watching. And see you on the next one.